Are you guys excited to be in the room tonight? Yeah? Come on, show of hands, seriously, if you're excited to be in the room tonight. I just want to take this time to welcome a few of our friends who are joining us after a while. Uh, welcome back. I, I don't want to say welcome, I want to say welcome back. Good to see you, Nikita, Anna, and Gia, Luke, and you know, your family, and, and even the, the Lobos. Man, so good to see you. I, I see Sushil and Alma as well. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, a lot of new faces. I know Ezzy's brother is here. Man, tonight is like, is like a whole bunch of new and an and a old gathering together. Uh, I, I love, somebody was asking me before the service, hey, how come you're always smiling? I was like, uh, you really haven't met me all through seven days, you know? Uh, Jewy sees, sees the other side of me a bit more often. But, but I got this thought and I wanted to share this with you. Have you, ever, have you ever made a prayer that has been answered? Anybody? Right? Now, you, you, you've lived that moment when you've got an answer to that prayer, right? Now imagine living that moment on loop. How, how is that? Would that feel awesome? Right? For me and Juhi, coming every week, seeing you guys, is an answer to our prayer on loop. When we gather, when we get to meet, and when we see Jesus really, you know, reach out to the needs of our, of our hearts, of our lives, and just seeing in every day where Jesus kind of restore every single person, that is amazing for us to see. And so that's why we love Sunday gatherings. We love, uh, you know, just doing this together. But this is not just the fullness of church. This is one of the ex expressions. And, and if you're here with us, you know, journeying, we want to invite you to know how you can get involved on, on the weekly happenings of church. But I'm not going to go into that. Tonight, I want to talk to you about faith. Is that okay? Uh, you, you see how I didn't set you up during worship? you know, to practice faith. But this is something that the Lord has really been stirring. In the last few weeks, if you're here with us in the room, we were talking about the role of grace when it comes to our renewal journey. We were talking about how the grace of God is not just limited to when you are saved, but grace plays a role in your daily life. Somebody say daily life. Every single day of your life, we need the grace of God. I need the grace of God. I am a product of grace. Anybody with me on that? Do we have any products of grace in this room? Right? Like we have been manufactured from the factory called grace. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, I don't know where we would be. Now, some of you have heard this statement one too many times. If it wasn't for the grace of God, things would have not happened. And, and, as much as we get immune to that statement, we cannot ignore the truth that is there in that. And we, as much as we are products of grace, grace alone is, is, is not going to be sufficient to bring in you, your lives and my lives, see and experience renewal. And so tonight, I want to kind of shift the conversation a bit from grace that we have been talking about, how grace plays a role to how faith helps us being renewed, right? For, for those of you, just to give you a context, this year we have been talking about our theme, which is renew. Everybody say renew. And, and renewal is a big piece of your spiritual journey in Jesus Christ. We, we, we know that this is the theme that we're going with, but those who hope in the Lord will what? Oh, come on. You, you, need to, you, you, need to, you need to say it like you were singing it. Sometime back, okay? But those who hope in the Lord will? A bit better. Let, let's, try, let's try one more time. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is not just an Instagram memory verse. This is not one of those verses that you highlight in your, in your physical Bibles, which most of you have forgotten what they are. Too soon, Alan? Too soon? I mean, I don't have a problem with digital Bibles. I've got both covered, okay? Uh, but this is not just one of those highlighter kind of verses. This is a part of our life for this year and beyond. Amen? We, we believe that Jesus, when he gets a hold of your life, he will make sure that he won't leave you where he found you. Are some of you experiencing that? 
He won't leave you in the wretched past. He won't leave you in the brokenness of your past. He won't leave you in the, in the limitations of your past. But in fact, he will pull you out from there and plug you in to a future that is filled with his Zoe life. And that is the hope that we have as Christ followers when we put our faith in Jesus Christ. This is not another religion that you are subscribing to. You are subscribing to a lifestyle. Somebody say a lifestyle. Somebody say a relationship. And that is what our faith is all about. If it was just about religion, man, it would have been so boring. And that's why life with Jesus is never meant to be boring. It feels boring sometimes, but how many of you also know that your feelings are not true sometimes? Anybody's had feelings that you thought you shouldn't have? Confession time, right? And, and that's where the word of God comes in. That's where the promise of God comes in. It, it pulls you out from your feelings and you plugs, it plugs you in to the truth. So this is the truth that we have been believing for in this year and beyond. And, and that's why I said as much as grace plays a role in renewal, faith also plays a role in renewal. I want to take you to just these few verses and then we'll kind of, from there, we will kind of jump into another big piece of scripture for tonight. Paul, when he was writing to the Colossians, he, he wrote these few verses in Colossians uh, uh, 3, verses 1 to 4. Can we all read this together? It's up there on, on the screens. Let's go. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your real life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. How many of you really believe what you read? Right? How many of you find it a bit out of context to believe what you just read? Right? I mean, Paul is, Paul, you're asking a bit too much. Tomorrow, I want to think about what I'm going to be cooking on a Monday morning before I go to work. I want to think about how my, how my monthly EMIs are going to be sorted out. I'm busy, Paul, thinking about that. Anybody with me on that? I'm busy thinking about how I can plan my investments now that the new financial year is coming up. And I know I need to book an appointment with Raj. For those of you who don't know who Raj is, we'll leave that for the end of the service. But, but isn't that how life looks like most of the time? I am busy thinking about things that are just around me and Paul is coming and disrupting that and saying, think about what? Things in heaven. Forget heaven. We can't think about like the next city. Heaven is far-fetched. Do you feel like that sometimes? Well, there's a reason Paul says that because he believes that the life that they have tapped into, the, the disciples and the apostles, the kind of life that they have tapped into, it really flips everything in life where you're no longer concerned about thinking what you're going to be doing tomorrow or a few weeks from now, a few months from now, a few years from now. You are thinking, you're fixated, your mind, your heart, everything on the inside of you is fixated on what Jesus wants you to do. That's what he has tapped into. And that's a life and that's a truth that Paul is inviting you into. Now, think with me for a moment. What would the fullest expression of verse 4 look like? Can, can we have verse 4 on the screen? What would the fullest expression of verse 4 look like? And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. Now we're getting a glimpse of what the, the, the future is going to look like. Where, where Jesus didn't just come as a savior, Jesus is going to come back as a king. Right? And Paul is helping his church get a glimpse of that. But between, between the, the, the eternal and the present, 
there is a journey called renewal and that is a journey that you and me are talking about this year and to see the fullness of that journey intellectual knowledge is not going to cut it that's why last week i was talking to you about knowing isn't enough and paul helps us get a glimpse of that and i want to jump to the book of acts where we see a, a tiny glimpse of what this this verse looks like from the life of peter and john now if you have been journeying with us in zealous you'd see that i love coming back to the scripture i love coming back to this piece where where we see peter and john experience a miracle which i thought they would have not seen it coming right we're going to be looking at acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 10 and i want to read that for you acts 3 verses 1 to 10 peter and john went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service as they approached the temple a man lame from birth was being carried in each day he was about he he was put beside the temple gate the one called the beautiful gate so he could beg from the people going into the temple when peter and john uh when when he saw peter and john about to enter he asked them for some money peter and john looked at him intently and peter said look at us somebody say look at us i want you to remember this phrase as as we go into this the the this talk somebody say once again look at us that's what they said the lame man looked at them eagerly expecting some money but peter said i don't have any silver or gold for you but i'll give you what i have in the name of jesus christ the nazarene get up and walk then peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up as he did the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened he jumped up stood on his feet and began to walk then walking and leaping and praising god he went into the temple with them all the people saw him walking and heard him praising god when they realized he was a lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate they were absolutely astounded this is one of the craziest miracles done by the apostles do do you believe that right we we see we see luke kind of record this and and before we go into uh, before we go any further i just want to pray over our talk tonight so jesus we want to just say lord let our hearts and minds truly be open to receive what you want us to receive may your word speak to us and minister to our hearts in jesus name we pray amen i want to talk to you about convergence tonight for those of you who who work in in the corporate uh culture convergence is pretty much out there in your day to day life the corporate uh call it the company's culture have you heard of that like have you ever walked in all the working folks if you walked in through your reception or your foyer uh you know they would have seen your values your mission your vision you know have you have you read that how many of you have just bypassed that every single time okay let's 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 zone in have you read the values of zealous outside when you walk in how many of you have just bypassed by that every every sunday right now i'm not i'm not here to guilt trip you i'm just telling you that sometimes that's how we process information we know it's there but yet we tend to miss on it now convergence in fact is a tendency by people to become more or like over time and and that's what the company culture that's why the one of the reasons why they present to you these values the mission and the statement is that they hope that at one point of time if you work till about 50 years in that organization you would become like them 
Do you agree to that? Okay, how many of you have picked up lingos that your managers or your senior managers or people around your company use? Right? How does that happen? Have you heard this statement before? You are a sum of the five people you hang out with. Have you heard that one before? Right? Let me tell you about a convergence episode in our home. This week, I woke up and um, Elia, was, Elia was awake. And uh, the first thing she does when I'm waking up, I'm not even out of bed. The first thing she does is, Dada, you have not put your watch in its place. I did that for you. Is the first thing I hear when I'm getting out of bed. Now take a wild guess where Elia picked that up from. It was definitely not me. I know Julie's here somewhere. I think she would have just walked out. But, but I shared this with her, okay? In case if you're thinking like she doesn't know about this. I shared this with her. And I said to myself, man, I'm living with two Juhis in the house. <laughs> Can you imagine what that looks like? Can you imagine living? I mean, I, I, love, I love how Juhi gets it, right? Sometimes I, I just can't get it, but she, she sees it. She's like, see, this is where you just put things in its place. And I was like, why? You don't need to. Husbands, do you guys agree with me? Okay, two husbands. We are in trouble, guys. Uh, we are in trouble. Uh, rest of you husbands, I don't know if you're just playing good tonight. You want some brownie points or... I don't know. You want your week and your meals to be on time this week. I get it. That's fine. But sometimes I was like, why does it need to be so organized? And that's the first thought I'm waking up to. But then I realized that that's how contagious the things you say can be. And, and what you're going to be looking at is Peter and John's response and their culture that they have abided by by just spending time with Jesus. And that's what I'm trying to bring your attention to is that we see that the life of disciples, the life of disciples after a point of time started looking a lot like Jesus Christ. Do you agree? The life of Je the, the Peter and John started looking a lot like Jesus just after about three and a half odd years. I mean, imagine the Peter that we see when Matthew talks about him. Or Luke talks about him. Peter is like frustrated. He's not getting any catch. He's like, I don't want to do this. I want to quit fishing. I want to do everything. And Jesus says, okay, you can quit fishing because I'm going to make you fishers of men. And Peter is like, what? Sometimes you don't get it when God says something into your life in a season where you're not really wanting to listen. But how many of you know that Jesus loves to be patient with you? And then just take you through that journey where Peter, where Jesus had to take Peter through that journey where every now and then he would like step up and do something stupid and Jesus says, okay man, I got you. Just, just track with me. And then we come to this particular piece in the scripture where, where Peter and John are walking and just doing what they were, they were asked by Jesus to do on a consistent basis. And they come across this man where where we're seeing the principle of faith in action. Somebody say faith in action. Now, now this is what I want to talk to 2023 Christ followers. You and me will never grow because of your rational. When it comes to your spiritual life. You and me will never grow because of your reasoning or your logic. You and me will grow because of our faith in Jesus Christ when it comes to spiritual maturity. Now, does that mean you, you, you just drop the ball when it comes to intellect and, and logic and rational? No, that's not, not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the problem with the 2023 church followers and church goers is that faith has taken a backseat. I want to say it again because you look like you didn't understand what I said. The problem with us is that faith has taken a backseat in our lives. And we expect Jesus to still work in our lives when you and me are still operating on the, on the principles of, of logic. 
on the principles of reasoning, on the principles of just intellect. But we see over here, these kind of scriptures, they just come and just disrupt everything that we have been forcing our minds and training our minds to. We, we, we come here and we see that a lame man from when? From birth. Somebody say from birth. Can you imagine from birth, this fellow has been used to just being picked up and put at this gate. He's used to that. Now I got to thinking, that this is not the first time that he would have heard about the disciples of Jesus Christ, right? Because by then, Jesus and his disciples were, were doing a lot of healings, a lot of miracles. There were teachings that were happening. There were gatherings that were happening. So I'm sure that at least two, twice he would have seen or heard about these disciples. Do you agree with me? Yet, yet, we see he was used to this idea of being picked up and put there. He was growing up with something that he had already accepted about his life. He, had growing, he was growing up with something that he had spent possibly most of his life, a, a condition that he, is, he has conditioned his mind and his life to be, to be lived in a certain way and nothing that he says or nothing anyone else says would change what he wants or what he wants to do because he has accepted something about his life. Let's bring it down to this room. How many of you have accepted things about your life which are contrary to what God says about your life. Do you see now what I'm trying to say? We, we are seeing a man who's being brought to this entrance and the only thing that he's willing to settle for is some coins or some food. This is what the Lord showed me that sometimes even Christ followers, the only thing that they want to settle for is just salvation. The only thing that Jesus' followers want to settle for is a good church service. The only thing that the that disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ want to settle for is just daily provisions. I want you to see a bit of you and me in this lame man. Are you okay for that challenge? I want you to see a bit of you and me in this because every now and then we feel crippled by life. Every now and then, we feel that the pressures of life are kind of burdening you down, it's kind of gripping you down, it's kind of almost pinning you down and saying, this is where you need to be. But then comes a word, that comes, that comes this moment that God brings in your life and where He wants to disrupt any, everything about your life. And that's what we're going to see happen with this man. Now, this person might be disappointed because of the medical system that might have let him down. This person might be disappointed by his maybe family members who might have let him down. This person might, could be disappointed with, with some of his social friends who would have let him down. Have you and me been disappointed by all of these guys? Come on church, talk to me tonight. All right? Yet, he was willing to show up. He was willing to say, okay, you know, if it means somebody needs to take me there, just take me there. If it means I settle for some daily provisions, maybe just let me settle for it. These are some of the facts that, were, that he was surrounded with. Let me ask you if there are five people in this room who live according to the facts that surround your life. Come on, guys. I want tonight to be one of those honest, raw conversations that we can have with each other. Can I put my hand up? Okay. Let, let me help you guys. Sometimes I am forced to put myself in that where, where I kind of, the, the facts are glaring at me in my face. But life takes a massive turnaround when facts encounter faith. That is what we're going to, that's what we see happening in this, in this encounter, right? Can I list a few facts for all of us tonight? Tell me if you agree to them or, or if it's a part of your life. I said this earlier. Fact. EMIs. 
Okay, c can we do this? Since we are talking about honest conversations, and it's uh, completely up to you if you want to step out of it, that's fine. When I say a fact, can you just put your hands up? Let's try that one more time. EMIs. It's great. Fear of the future. Messy relationships. Never ending medical prescriptions. Anxiety. Worry. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. Some of you are like, Dinath, you know me too well. Like, you, know, you studied me for one year and now you're just calling this out. No, I, I, I'm not doing any of that, okay? But haven't we settled for this church? And yet, this is what God desires, that we are driven by faith. Somebody say, we are driven by faith. God does not want us to be driven by facts. Let me tell you this. My, I, I, th I think my team knows this way too much, but I'll still say it. If we were driven by facts, zealous would have still been a good idea. And I say this not to like put a pat on my back or pat on, on our team's back. I say this to, to emphasize the truth about God in this room. That sometimes you need to stop paying attention to the facts around you and start focusing on the faith on the inside of you. That is what Jesus expects every disciple to live. Faith. Faith. And the truth is, faith does not ignite by reason. Faith comes by hearing and believing in Jesus. If you're waiting for faith to show up in your life when you're just constantly reasoning out everything, you are setting up yourself for disappointment. But faith comes by believing and hearing about Jesus. Isn't that what the scripture says? How does faith come? By hearing the word of God. By hearing the word of God. Stop listening to those five people who are talking to you about just realities. You're going to get messed up in your mind. Stop listening to just facts and give your heart, your mind and your soul the opportunity to listen to the truth. Because Jesus, isn't that what he said? I am the way the truth and the life. See, these are simple things, church. These are simple things that we have read in different contexts, but we yet fail to practice it. And it's our faith in Christ that has the power to cut through every facts and every circumstances of life when it comes to a crippled scenario. You see, Jesus is the focus of our faith. Jesus is the focus of our repentance. And Jesus is the focus even of our salvation. You see, the, the one of the things that happens when you focus on faith, the religious folks around you will get annoyed at you. I'm not saying this, the scripture says it. You want to see it? Let's go to Acts 4. This is what happens. Peter and John, they heal this man. Everybody's astounded. That, that this guy is, this guy has gotten up, this guy is praising God, this guy is walking. Everybody, the people who are after the truth, the people who are celebrating faith are seeing that. But you want to know what the religious folks and the people who are pessimists and the people who love logic and reason, you want to know what their focus is? Acts 4 helps us see this. Acts 4, chapter, uh, Acts 4 verses 5 onwards. The next day, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of religious law met in Jerusalem. And as the high priest was there along with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other relatives of the high priest, they brought in the two disciples. By what power or in whose name have you done this? You all know that when a conversation starts like this, something is messed up. Something is really messed up. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of our people. You see, this is what Jesus does. If it was Peter two years back, he would have just taken the knife and cut their ears off. You remember that, Peter? 
Yeah, but that's not what your old self does when you spend time with Jesus. That's not what your old, well, that's not what your new self does when you spend time with Jesus. That's not what the new you does when you spend time with the Holy Spirit. But this is what we say, right? Peter is like all of a sudden using respectful language. Rulers <laughs> and elders of our people. Like, Peter, what happened to you? John is like, bro, what happened to you? Like, just a few months back, you were willing to slit somebody in the garden. You're willing to knock somebody and now like, yeah, it's the Holy Spirit, John. You don't know it, you know. Let's read on. Are we being questioned today because we have done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all of the people of Israel that he was, he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. The man you crucified but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, the stone that you builders rejected has now become the corner stone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Convergence. You see that? Convergence. They had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say. There was nothing the council could say. See, this, this miracle that we see, right, it's not about, it's not just about Peter and John. This miracle is about the intimacy of Peter and John. Sometimes we can get so busy church, doing church, that we forget what intimacy with Jesus looks like. We get, and, and I've said this one too many times, we get so busy playing church. We get so busy doing all the right things that the heart is not in it. That the heart is not in it. And we see here that Peter and John are merely reflecting. You wait. Peter and John are merely reflecting how Jesus taught them about intimacy. You see, they give them credit, they give Jesus the credit that it is not us, it is Jesus. But I want to share with you something that that the Lord stirred in my heart. This is where, this is, this is like a humility check for all of us, okay, tonight. How many of you have been taught this idea that, hey, when it comes to being a, uh, a follower of Jesus, you need to point people to Jesus? Have you heard that statement before? Right? Right. <laughs> I mean, I was like, okay, <laughs> what's happening? You know, you've heard that before, right? You need to point people to Jesus. Hey, bro, don't talk about yourself. Just point people to Jesus. Don't be so full of yourself. Point people to Jesus. But I want to take you back to that phrase that you said that I pointed out in verse uh, Acts chapter 3, verse uh, 4. Peter and John looked at him in intently. And what did Peter say? Look at. He didn't say, hey man, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Come on, somebody say this with me one more time, loud and strong. Somebody say, look at us. Yeah. Somebody turn to the person who's sitting next to you and tell me, look at me. Maybe that's the first time you're saying that to your spouse today, but that's okay. Somebody say, look at me, look at us. That's what they said. And, and this messed me in my head for a bit. Because most of our teachings, when it comes to the church, has been, you know, we need to be humble. We need to practice maturity. You can't talk, talk to people about yourself. You need to point them to Jesus. Well, yes. But what if 
they were not pointing the lame person to themselves. They were not pointing this lame person to just Peter and to just John, but they were pointing the young person to the Christ in Peter and to the Christ in John. You know, far too many times, church, we think that there's going to be like a supernatural thing and intervention for, Jesus, for, for people around you to encounter Jesus. But you know the most tangible person who's responsible for people around you to experience Jesus is, come on, you know it, say it. Say it, come on, say it like, like, like this revelation is hitting you. Say it, it's me. Let, let every false humility in you die tonight and say it's me. Stop saying I need to point people to Jesus where Jesus is saying, man, I'm waiting for them to see me through you. Let me ask you this, right? When you hang out in your social circles, wherever you hang out at work, at business, school, college, education, do they see you? They see you, right? How often do they see the Christ in you? How often do people around you take notice of the Jesus inside of you? Because we, we have been content that, okay, when it comes to seeing the Jesus in me, they'll see it when I bring them to church over here. Because then I can see, I can freely lift my hands. I can sing multiple times the, 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 the songs that the band is asking me to sing. I can, I can say what the pastor is asking me to say. I can do what my friends ask me to do. Okay, it's time to pray. I can do that. It's easy, right? But where were they? They were, they were on the outskirts. They were, they, were, they were in the temple court. They were in the temple gate. Yes, but, but, church, it's time that people see the Christ in you. Don't make life just about, just about yourself. Yet, Jesus is saying, make life about you, where Jesus where it can be seen through you. Am I complicating this or are you able to get this? Are you able to see that, that Jesus is waiting on you? Jesus is waiting on you to reveal the Christ to the people around you. Well, well you're going to say, no, no, how, how can I do that? Because sometimes I don't feel capable. Sometimes I don't feel able. Sometimes I don't feel spiritual. I don't feel holy enough. I don't feel able or I, I don't know what's happening with me. I'm so messed up in my life. Somebody needs to tell me about Jesus. Well, all of that is true. But the scripture says they were ordinary people with no religious training. Ordinary people with no religious training, revealing Jesus. I think that sounds a bit like you and me today. Ordinary people with no religious training. Now, I'm not against going and studying in theological colleges, okay? Or taking up courses. I'm, I'm all for that. But get the heart of what, what, what Luke is writing. Get the heart of what Luke is drawing your attention to. The theological understanding was never meant to be a barrier. It was meant to be a step that you can climb on and help people see Jesus in you. Tonight, I believe Jesus wants to just break every barrier in your mindset when it comes to living as a witness for Jesus. To living as a witness for Jesus. You know, it's, it's crazy that we see In verse 14, Acts, verse, Acts chapter 4 and verse 14, the council, it says that they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them. And there's nothing they could say. Can you reimagine this scenario in your social circles where you do life where you spend most of your time. But sometimes the easiest thing is for Jesus to show up. But you know how we do it? We make it hardest when we want to show up in that place. 
and and what i mean by that is not physically showing up what i mean by that is trying everything within you to convince people and kind of brainwash people and manipulate people and kind of talk people into this spiritual spiritual understanding and knowledge that you have of jesus christ whereas you are meant to be carriers of this gospel message you are meant to be witnesses of the gospel isn't that what he said that you will you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth and sometimes church when when we talk about being a witness the key element to to be a witness is your faith in Jesus and and this is what i've been trying to stir up all this while to bring you to this place and help you understand that when it comes to faith while you would have heard of so many different kind of understandings and definitions but one of the simplest thing that faith does in you is that it gives you an identity faith in jesus gives you an identity faith in jesus gives you this this truth that your religious ways were never good enough to get you saved faith in faith in jesus christ helps you know this that you have been accepted in spite of the biggest mistakes that you could ever commit but jesus is still giving you another chance and say hey don't do that because i've got a life that is planned out for you which is so much better so i want to kind of bring you to this place church where i want to close off with what i started I don't know if you've been a Christ follower for maybe one week, one year, or maybe ten years, or maybe even more. But if Jesus is never really being revealed through your life, are you even a Christ follower? If if you and me can never model out the love that Jesus modeled, if you and me can never express the grace that we have received, if you and me can never express the forgiveness that we have been received, if we if we can never model it out or express it out not preach about it but just express it out are you really a christ follower see because faith in jesus gives you an identity and that identity is that you're a disciple of the lord jesus christ that identity is that you are accepted you are chosen you're not broken anymore you might be broken in, in in one phase of your life but you're not broken anymore because the lord jesus christ found you redeemed you saved you called you by name and has asked you to walk into a future that is defined by him so since we're talking about convergence and since we're talking about reflecting christ and and being like jesus what does that look like today It's the first thing like I want I want to just leave you with three things and and if you want to write them down I hope you can just take note of these three things. The first thing I've already shared it our faith in, in Jesus gives us a new identity to live like Jesus. The second thing is our intimacy with Jesus and our and our fellowship with his community teaches us to reflect Christ better. Isn't that what we see in the life of Peter and John? They were able to do this because of their intimacy with Jesus. You want to reflect Christ? See how you're doing when it comes to your intimacy with Jesus. And it's okay if you if you're saying Denad, I'm in a big mess right now. If you're honest and saying that, that's better rather than saying I think it's completely fine Denad. our intimacy with Jesus and our fellowship with his community that's why you and me need the church not just to make ourselves feel good and accepted and welcome but sometimes we need a whack on our back and say hey man how are you doing spiritually can i pray for you can i can i encourage you can i maybe remind you that we need to take this scripture seriously we need to take this whole thing called church seriously we're not here to play fool I mean we love welcoming people from all walks of life but after 5 years if your walk is not changed there's something wrong with you or there's something wrong with us basically everything is wrong with everybody and then what are we doing in this place So 
your intimacy with Jesus is never complete when it comes to until your fellowship with community both of them play a good match and the third thing your curiosity to learn and grow in scripture helps us get a mature understanding of what faith really looks like but i know someone in this room is far too overwhelmed with everything that's happening in your life it's far too fixated on the seasons that you are experiencing in your life and these three things might be too much for you to remember but i want to leave you with this one word convergence you define that for yourself in the light of you knowing jesus and living like jesus this 2023 how do you want that to be let's pray can i ask you to just maybe take take another moment to just just have another conversation with god and just ask yourself honestly truly god where do you think i stand today when it comes to faith and my identity in you where do you think i stand today when it comes to my intimacy with you where do you think i stand today when it comes to my fellowship with this community that you have given me where do you think jesus i stand today when it comes to my curiosity and my commitment to learn scripture father help us we pray that we would be a church and a community that is driven by this identity that we are people who are called by you Jesus to reflect you in our settings in this very city where you have positioned us a god that as much as we would be renewed from the inside out because of faith that our faith would also help us reflect Jesus that our talk and our walk would reflect Christ may you help us lord help us oh god thank you for tuning in for that message we really hope that that has blessed your heart immensely and zealous It's our desire that Jesus would meet you at the point of your need and that you would truly grow in the love and the grace that he has to offer each one of us. And that's why if you have been enjoying the content that has been coming to you, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel, to share this content with your friends and your loved ones, and maybe even consider partnering with us as we take the message of the gospel beyond the four walls of Zealous. Once again it means so much for us when you join in. So thank you for being here with us. God bless you and may you have a great week ahead.